I'm back. Hey, everybody. I have coffee. How about you? I haven't really spoken this morning except to yell at the dog. They got out of the house and went down the back steps. and They kept us up last night because there's probably a raccoon in the trees behind me or in front of me. I've looked. I can't find them. But we had our windows open last night, and they were loud all night long. All night long. So, huh, life in the jungle. That's what Robert always says. Life in the jungle. Oh, that's hot. Mm. Anyway, so we're on day five. Day five of, and I get, get this. The chaos to clean book, you can see it the right way. I learned a secret. Isn't it fun to learn something every day? I learned how to do a live video and t get rid of the mirror image. Yeah, I did. And it, I, my sister Dina told me to Google it, uh, and it's on YouTube. And there's this little English lady, I think, and it's a one-minute video. And she tells you when you get ready to do the live, you can do it before you start the, the live video. There's a little magic wand in the corner. Click the magic wand. And then you click the tools where there's a hammer and a, a wrench or something. Click that and you can flip the picture so that the stuff you're looking at, like the flag on my shirt right here, is the right way. And... So is my book. Anyway, day five. And the dog really wants to get my microphone. Is, although it's kind of strange for you, if you're used to looking at a mirrored picture. This is day five. And I'll read it to you. Recognize the negative things you say. And, and now turn them into something good. So, what does that mean? What does that really mean? Well, we are our own worst enemy. We beat ourselves up all the time. And these negative voices that you're hearing in your head are probably voices from your past. And they have uh, just stuck in there. And they're on this loop that goes over and over and over telling you that you're not good enough and that you're never going to be you know but I don't even want to put those things there because I know you are and I know you can do because I've done it and if I can do it anybody can I promise you if I can do this anybody can so we have um an essay to read. It's called "The Voice Are the Voices from the Past Paralyzing You," and then there's a testimonial. And I just want you to find the peace that I have, the peace that comes from letting go of the negativity that has. Um, I look like I've, I've got um, Parkinson's or something because I'm wiggling my neck because I'm looking at me and it's not the way it normally is. <laughs> I'm looking at the way you would see me and I'm, I usually see myself in a mirror image but those negative voices are killing us they really are killing us because we, we we get so caught up in what we say to ourselves now when when I first started getting organized the thing that I wanted to do was to get my home in order Get organized. What is that? She's got a squeak toy. She wants me. She wants me to throw it. Oh, she's got the rope now, and she wants me to play tug tug. I'm not real good at tug tug. Anyway, those negative voices are eating us alive, and we've got to recognize them. Number one, recognizing them, and and. You know, trying to figure out where they came from. Now, write them down on a piece of paper and get a, a pie plate 
and go outside and set them on fire. I throw them in the fireplace and set them on fire. Let the negativity go away. Th burn it. Do whatever you have to. Make sure you're not going set to set the forest on fire. But the main thing is you recognize them when you hear them. Recognize them when you hear them. And that way you can start to eliminate them. Now, right now, Robert is gone next door. They are moving and they're having a yard sale. And when we have yard sales, a lot of times, those negative voices pop in our heads, you know. The yard sales is nickels and dimes and quarters and dollars. You know, you have a table for this, table for that. But if you paid 50 bucks for something, you don't want to sell it for a dollar. You really don't. And then you feel guilty. And see, guilty, feeling guilty is another one of those negative feelings that we have. We've got to let go of the guilt and forgive ourselves. And Leanne and I went over all of this in, in body clutter. So if you have to forgive yourself and, and let them go. Um, I don't go to yard sales, but I told him if he saw any cast iron over there to bring it home. <laughs> I might have to get rid of a couple pieces of cast iron. I love my cast iron. But the main thing is recognize those negative, negative things you say to yourself. Now, when I was getting organized, I, it's so broad, get organized. But then I recognized that I was my own worst enemy. So that's when I made another New Year's resolution. And that New Year's resolution was to be kind to me. Just that simple. If you wouldn't say it to your child or your husband or your wife, if, if you wouldn't say it to them, don't say it to yourself. Be good to yourself. Be sweet. Be nurturing. We, we may not all have had mothers that were wonderful mothers, but by golly, we can mother ourselves. With Mother's Day coming up next, next Sunday, that's usually an essay I send out. We have to learn to mother ourselves and be grateful for the, the women in our lives or even our fathers who mothered us, who took care of us. And for me, it was my grandmother. She, she was a godly woman and she blessed me every day. And I, every night when I wash my hands, I use this hand soap that is um, Jergens, And it reminds me of her because she used to use Jergens lotion all the time. I don't like the lotion, but when I wash my hands, it, it, it brings back that memory. And I thank God for my godly grandmother who, who put a hedge of protection around me as, as I was growing up and my sisters. Um, we survived. We, we survived. And I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for her and her teaching me about shining that sink and pretty is as pretty does. One day I'll write a book of all my grandmother's sayings. If Kate never could do anything, she used to say. So you got to get up and do something. It's a beautiful, well, it's cloudy here, but it's still a beautiful day. Maybe to be a little cooler. Yesterday was kind of warm, and uh, I got hot, and I got me some shoes, finally. I got me some shoes that are cool, and I got them on eBay. Can you imagine? New inbox on eBay. So I'm happy, and I think I only paid $16 for them. <laughs> but they're like the ones I've been wearing that I outgrew this winter. I just got a bigger size. And I'm not ashamed of that because my feet deserve to be cool. Now, write down those negative things, but don't dwell on them. Let them go. And when you hear them, write them down and burn them. Get rid of them. Say, nope, 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 nope. When you hear yourself say, you never could do anything, say, no, I can. Now I can. And another, another fun thing to do, and I learned this from Dr. Wayne Dyer. We went to a conference of his a few years ago. But he talked about um, the I am's. 
And the Bible talks about this too. This is biblical. I am that I am. I don't know where, where it is in the Bible, but when you say I am, you are accepting what you're saying. And I play this little game with myself at night when I can't fall asleep, which is hardly ever. Or if I wake up in the middle of the night from a bad dream or something, which is rare. But I play this little game and a friend went with me to this conference and we played this game that night. We roomed together. And what we did is we did the ABCs of I am's. You know, I am articulate. Not first thing in the morning, but yeah, I'm articulate. articulate. Um, I am artsy too. Come up with adjectives that that represent you. You want to see my shoes? Oh, when we get ready to get off, don't let me forget. Because um, I don't want to move my camera right now. Because I'd have to flip it around, and I can't get. I'm in a in a like a bar stool, and I. Yeah, I don't want to strain and so anyway. The ABCs. B I am bold. I'm bossy. You see? Where I'm going? C. I am um cute. <laughs> Not really first thing in the morning, but yeah, I'm cute. I'm courageous too. You see? It's it's kind of fun. And so you're changing the negative things that you say about yourself into positive things. And that's a good thing, as Martha Stewart would say. That's a good thing. So go through the ABCs. If you have to, write them down. And that'll be fun for you to do that. Just get rid of the negative voices in your head. They're somewhere from your past. And when you figure out where they came from that's in your head... That's what body clutter is all about, getting rid of the clutter that's in our head. It's a whole process of flying, finally loving yourself. You can do it. And I'll show you my tennis shoes. Let me take one of them off. Yep. They are Brooks. They have a... Um, a really wide foot base so I feel really stable in them and <clears throat> long shoe strings so that they tie well now my foot is naked <laughs> we're having fun aren't we so don't I don't, let me go let me get back to yard sales I'm gonna go a little longer today because my neighbors have any yard sale they're moving that's a good thing and I mean not that they're moving I hate that they're moving but they're moving back to Colorado. They weren't really crazy about our mountains. They like those bigger mountains out in Colorado. Um, when you move, you got to get rid of stuff. Don't take anything you don't love. Don't take anything with you you don't love and you don't use. Pare down your essentials. Downsize. It's it's fun, and you can. Right now, it's moving in May, and we're. We're moving our bodies, but we can also pretend to move, like my neighbor's moving. We can pretend to move. And if we pretend to move, we can get rid of a lot of clutter. And that clutter is what's standing in the way of loving the home you've got. One time we got a testimonial from a lady, and they lived in an 800-square-foot house. It's a small house. But they had so much stuff, they could not breathe in that house. But she started getting rid of the stuff and only having the things that, that they used and loved. And the house became much bigger because it wasn't closing in on them. Now let me tell you what I watched my husband do yesterday. He decided that he needed to put away all his winter shirts, his long sleeve shirts. He ran them all through the wash machine, and he got out all of his summer shirts, the short sleeve shirts, and he ran them all through the washing machine, and he is folding up all the all the all the long sleeve shirts and putting them in a Rubbermaid bin and sticking them in the top of our closet, because he likes to be able to see his clothes. Can you imagine that? 
He's so B.O. He's born organized. He's just sweet as he can be. He made me coffee before he went to before he went to the yard sale next door. He's not home yet, so I don't know what he's doing or what he's buying. He didn't come get the gator to go down there and haul it home or my truck. Purple sheets would be fun. Yep. So this is my shoe. It's just like the shoe I've been wearing for about five years. They've quit making them. Brooks has. This is called the Addiction 11. Can you imagine that? I got a shoe that's named 11. But I love it. And I, I have a search set up on, on, on eBay. And when a new one gets posted, I'll, I'll try to get it. But I had to go up from a nine and a half. Well, no, I went, this is still a nine and a half but it is a wider shoe so my foot doesn't feel i have a high instep or arch no it's not arch it's the top of my foot is high it's hard for me to wear boots so get a pair of shoes you love you'll move if you get a pair of shoes you love and these are vented so they're cooler they're much cooler so the only time I recommend having a yard sale is if you're moving, just just to give the stuff away and get it out of your house. And then let your kids do it. Ooh, there goes the Paley 80 Woodpecker. Wow, it's big. It's a new one. He's got an orange face, which is weird. I think he's been digging in our orange dirt, our red dirt. So... I get sidetracked. Get a pair of shoes you love and wear them. Tie them to your feet. And then maybe maybe tomorrow I'll get Robert to come out here and wave at all y'all. He doesn't like to be on camera. He really doesn't like to. That's a palliated woodpecker showing out for you. Yeah, it is. He's mad. It's a boy. We named him Donald because his face is orange. <laughs> we like to name our birds. He's been digging in the dirt, and so he's got his white spots are orange. And Robert says, well, he looks kind of like our present. Let's just name him Donald. But he's loud. Uh-oh, somebody's answered him. No, nope, the dog's in the house. How she got in the house, I don't know. That, that, that was the dog. She must have went around the front door and Robert let her in. So he's home from the yard, so I bet he didn't buy anything. Y'all have fun today. Get outside. Go play. Do something wonderful. Enjoy the time you've got today. Put something in the crock pot and get outside. Ha pack a picnic lunch. <laughs> we laugh a lot. I think I married Robert because he makes me laugh a whole lot. Every day, he makes me laugh. He has this weird sense of humor. I think he should be on TV. I think he should have his own podcast. I think he, because he knows a lot of stuff. He's the smartest man I have ever met. And he doesn't try to make me feel like I don't know anything. So when I ask him a question, he answers it for me. Well, y'all, I've gone 18 minutes. This is, uh, I'm running my mouth this morning. Well, y'all have fun today. And remember, get rid of those. Hey, honey, come here. The ladies want to meet you. Hey, he's going to come out. You can kind of get right here and they will see you. There he is. Hey guys. <laughs> it's girls. Girl, girls or guys, ask any waitress. <laughs> he knows that's my pet peeve. Uh, we had a visit from the Paleated Woodpecker. I told him what we named him. The orange-faced Donald. <laughs> they liked it. Anyway, did you buy anything? A dollar and a half worth of stuff. What'd you buy? A, a little headlamp that straps on. For, he bought a headlamp. For, um, you know, close work. And a little little tool thing that hangs on a, a key ring. He bought gadgets. We love gadgets. Well, I'll see y'all later. Bye.